Hey there, everyone. I'm Patrick Ferguson from Skull Splitter Dice, and in today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Leonin. Mythic Odysseys of Theros gave us some new cat folk that are far more ferocious than their distant tabaxi cousins. Where the tabaxi are, indeed, cat folk, the Leonin are lion folk with muscular jaws, claws, and giant golden manes. These kings of the savannah are brand new to D&D, and while they technically only exist in the world of Theros, you can expect them in a lot of other campaigns, and that's exactly why we're going to go over everything you need to know about them in today's episode. Leonin prides are close-knit communities within Theros, isolated in their blasphemy. Unlike every other civilization on Theros, the Leonin have rejected the gods. They don't deny their existence, after all it is quite difficult to ignore the deity's existence in this universe, but rather they denounce them as unworthy of worship. While there is a devout Leonin every now and again, most regard them at best as a nuisance and at worst as a cause for all of their mortal woes. Leonin are prideful and self-reliant, and most have no need for gods to coddle them. In the ancient past, they served the Archons, a service that still leaves a bitter taste among other races, and they do not intend to make the same mistake twice. Prides typically live in either tent villages or dens dug into foothills, and while this may sound primitive, the Leonin are anything but. Their homes are often decorated with woven textiles, bone sculpture, and intricate pottery. Most non-Leonin rarely get to see that, however. Leonin guard their territory well, and non-Leonin usually get a cold reception. Many other peoples, humans in particular, still regard the Leonin with suspicion due to their ancient allegiance to the Archons. More than once, this has led to full-on wars, but the Leonin now coexist in peace with their neighbors, as long as they keep to their own territory. However, the Leonin understand that an individual is not the culture that they come from. Given time, anyone can earn their trust, though humans and tritons will have their work cut out for them in this instance. Once the cold reception has worn off, most Leonin are prideful, confident, and competitive. Leonins tend to love fighting in all forms, from traditional sparring to arguments and debate. That confidence, self-reliance, and pride is the core of the Leonin culture and philosophy. The gods have failed them in their eyes, and they're determined to do better on their own without some deity's strings attached. Unlike tabaxi that get a generic cat description to work from, Leonin are very definitively lions. Leonin are muscular, covered in fur, stand six to seven feet tall, have feline tails, and their heads look damn near identical to those of lions. I'm afraid to say this doesn't exactly give you a whole lot of wiggle room beyond Lion Man as your description, so I encourage you to play around with the specifics of your character like the fur, mane, and everything else that you can really extract detail from. One thing I commonly see among Leonin characters is stuff like braiding their manes in order to come across as more civilized. This is just one of many ways that you could modernize your Leonin character. Each Leonin has a personal name followed by the name of their pride and usually includes the preposition of the. For example, a member of the Iron Maid pride named Doxia would introduce herself as Doxia of the Iron Maid. This is a pretty simple naming convention, but we'll throw up some other examples on screen so that you know what we're talking about. Starting with your ability score increase, you get a plus two to constitution and a plus one to strength. This really pushes you hard into a martial class territory and most of their other abilities support that. Barbarians, fighters, and paladins will likely get the most use out of these stats. Blood hunters as well fit perfectly for Leonin if your DM is allowing such class options. As for your age, Leonin mature and age at the same rate as humans, so nothing special there. Leonin tend towards the good alignment. Leonin who are focused on the pride lean towards lawful good specifically. The strong good to lawful good push can make barbarians slightly awkward, but paladins and fighters are still a really good fit. These lion men typically stand at about 6 feet tall, with some standing over 7 feet tall. Your size is, of course, medium. This is another victim of the big but not large category. And this is probably more egregious than others because you typically associate lions with being, well, big. Your base walking speed is 35 feet, and that extra speed stacks with other movement bonuses as well, which allows you to just zip around the battlefield to your heart's content. Something Leonin get that I also think is very useful is dark vision. And while it's fairly common, I don't think it's anything to sneeze at. In many scenarios, it won't come up, but when the lights go out and there's an issue at hand, dark vision is pretty much always going to become vitally important. Of course, we all know that lions have their claws, and Leonin are no different. Your claws are a natural weapon which you can use to make unarmed strikes. 
If you hit with them, you can deal slashing damage equal to 1d4 plus your strength modifier instead of the typical bludgeoning damage that you find from unarmed strikes. They're nice to have as a backup, but just like every other natural weapon in 5e, it's not that great. Leonins also have a Hunter's Instincts, which means you have proficiency in one of the following skills of your choice, whether that be Athletics, Intimidation, Perception, or Survival. Bonus skill proficiencies are always nice and appreciated, and Perception is probably the most universally useful option, but don't feel pigeonholed into just picking one. You can definitely pick whichever goes best with your class or background. Something big cats are perhaps most known for is their Daunting Roar. This is the core trait that sets Leonin apart from every other racial option. A 10-foot fear burst as a bonus action with a short rest recharge is pretty strong. You can ignore your allies with the effect, and since it's a short rest recharge, you'll really want to use this on every encounter that you can. That said, it's a pretty unique language to know, and there are definitely clever ways to incorporate this into your campaign, whether that be teaching other members of your party Leonin or something like that in order to send secret messages. There's definitely some way that you can incorporate this into your campaign that doesn't involve just translating for people that are talking to other Leonins. Like I always say on this show, there is no right or wrong way to build the character that you want to play, but if you are interested in playing the most optimized build for your character, these are definitely some good starting points. Starting off with the cat dog. Leonin Barbarians line up incredibly well with the plus two to constitution and the plus one to strength. That movement speed bump also stacks along with the Barbarian's extra movement, making Leonin Barbarians both extra fast and extra chunky. The one mismatch is that Activating Rage uses a bonus action, as does your Roar. But all that means is that your Roar will probably just need to go off in the second round of combat as opposed to the first. I recommend taking the path of the Totem Warrior and taking the Wolf as your Totem Spirit at third level. I realize that this is a cross-flavored cat-dog character now, but granting advantage to your allies in range while imposing fear, and thus disadvantage, on your enemies with the Roar is a nasty combination that one really shouldn't pass up lightly. And then we have the Lion Knight. Cavalier fighters already want to tank hits and hit hard, and the plus two to constitution and plus one to strength already fits well into that tactic. All the Leonin and Cavalier abilities want you right at the forefront of combat and mesh perfectly once you're there. The real synergy here is the interaction between your Roar and the Cavalier's unwavering mark ability. Normally a frightened enemy's best tactic is to get away from you and attack your allies instead. Marking and then frightening your target makes sure they have no good options left. Get yourself stuck in and just mark and roar at whichever target is otherwise going to be the most trouble for your party. And then lastly, we have the Cat Demon. So, the actual damage output here is a little iffy, but you get to transform into a giant cat monster with flaming claws, and I felt like I had to put this build out here for people to abuse in their own campaigns, and it kind of seemed like my moral obligation to do so as a D&D &D YouTuber. The Blood Hunter class, which is definitely not adventurous league legal, but legal in most games, already wants that plus two to constitution, and for our build, the plus one to strength works just fine. We're going for the Order of the Lycan, which will allow you to transform into a monster form that can conveniently still use your blood rights and your roar while transformed. That extra movement kicks in here too. The main issue is that you'll end up with a lot of abilities fighting for that same bonus action, but come on. It's a demon cat with fire claws. You should at least consider it if it's even the least bit interesting to you. To be honest with you all, I have yet to run a Leonin myself, and I've only seen them pop up in the campaigns I DM for from time to time. But in doing research for this video, I can definitely see why their popularity is growing. Perhaps because of works like The Lion King and Chronicles of Narnia, we've come to expect that lions, well, within the fantasy genre at least, carry themselves with a sense of nobility and lead through strength and intelligence alike. And I think that is something a lot of players are looking for in their own characters. Which, who could blame them? Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Be sure to like and subscribe because we put out new content like this every week. And if you're creating a Leonin character that you're proud of, I would love to read about it down in the comments, especially because, as I mentioned, I haven't run into many Leonin characters, so I would love to hear about what you guys have played in the past and what you're planning on playing in the future. Thanks again for watching. My name's Patrick Ferguson from Skull Splitter Dice, and until next time, farewell. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so you never miss out.